Hello, once again, AP Calculus AP students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School. And in this particular video, we are going to have our nice little introduction, primarily over topic 2.2 from your calculus curriculum. Now, although the lesson in the notes talks about 2.2, 2.3, and 2.4 being blended together, we're really gonna focus on this general form of the definition of derivative. So as I said before, your notes packet that you get at Avon High School blends all these ideas together. But if we just focus on the primary principles of 2.2, it's going to extend from what you learned in 2.1. What is that? Well, you had learned that the derivative of a function at a point can be defined by this particular limit. And hopefully you were able to gather from that lesson is that this limit is nothing more than taking the difference of two y values and dividing it by the difference of two x values. And we try to say that that's going to be this tangent line's slope. Well, how can that be a tangent line slope when you're talking about two different points? Well, we can trick those two points in becoming a single point by using the idea of the limit. And if that's a little confusing to you, maybe you want to take another look at, at the 2.1 information. All right, so what are we going to do to extend that idea? Well, it says that this limit, you know, which calculates the derivative of the function f when x is c, can be expressed a little differently. What if we wanted a general derivative that can be computed maybe for any value of x, not just some specific number c that we know, but like say for all possible c's that we would just maybe call a variable x. Well, this activity will kind of get the ball rolling with that particular um, concept. So let's see what it says. It says rewrite and then simplify the limit above if we want to use um, the new expression for x, which is c plus h. Now, I wouldn't worry a whole lot right now about what does c plus h mean. Let's go ahead and just follow these directions and write this the way that it, it uh, requests. So we would have, hmm, let's see, the limit. And instead of x approaching c, I guess we would have to change that x to c plus h. So c plus h approaches c. OK, don't worry about that right now. We just want to replace all of our x's with c plus h, and then we'll take a look and see what happens. Here in the first uh, half of the numerator, f of x is going to be changed to f of c plus h. Subtract f of c. And then in the denominator, it looks like we're going to have c plus h and then minus c. So all we did, and I can highlight this to illustrate it, is we took each instance of these x's, of which there were three, they're now highlighted in green, and those x's have be, been changed to a c plus h. Okay, well, what can we do next? Well, it did say to simplify this. Okay, well, if we were to simplify this little arrow statement, and we've had this conversation in my class before, but typically this arrow is going to have the same properties as an equal sign. So you are allowed to subtract the C from both sides, and doing so leaves you with only H on the left side and a zero on the right side. Now in the numerator, there's not a whole lot that one can do, so we'll just rewrite it. Nothing combines. And then of course in the denominator, you can cancel your two C's, and then boom, you're left here. And oops, I already messed up. <laughs> this is not going to be an f of x. Let's call that an f of c. So sorry if that confused you there for a second. So what do we do with this? Well, we're kind of done. We can't really do much of anything else with it. OK, well, so what do we have? Well, what we have is this alternate form of the derivative, as you can see here at the bottom of your screen. It's just another way to think of the derivative of the function f when x is equal to c. OK, why? Why did we learn this? Well, it's not until you get to the next page. What is very powerful about this above definition is that if we don't use a value c inside of that function, in other words, if we think about using something else for those three instances of c, we could use a random variable x. Remember, c is a specific number, like 2, negative 1, 5, whatever. But if we use 
x in those places, then we can encompass every single number and have a very general definition of the derivative of, at any point on our graph. And that's exactly what's going to happen. And when you flip the page of your notes, you see up here we have the actual definition of the derivative in general form. And all that transpired is those c's were replaced by x's. And you're going to want to get comfortable with this formula just as much as you have hopefully grown comfortable with the one that you learned from topic 2.1, because they both can be used under different situations. Now, the last thing that I want to do here is before we, we sign off is make sure that you're aware that many textbooks use a slightly different type of variable in place of the H. Sometimes this definition is written where the H's are replaced by this delta x, right? So if you notice on the blue box, all of those h's get replaced with this delta x. Well, I'm going to ask you one question here. What do you think the meaning of delta x is? And hopefully, you're thinking change in x, and that's exactly right. Delta x is kind of nice in that it's a little bit more apparent what it might mean, change in x, whereas h is a little bit more disguised. Now, the benefit of h is that it probably looks a little prettier and easier to use than a delta x together. So you want to get a little familiar with each. Now, the AP Calc exam, when they typically address definition of derivative problems, they're going to use h. That's all I've got with this video. Um, I want you to tune into the next couple because you're going to see some of these examples. This next example one will be where we kick off our, our second video over this particular topic so that you get just a little bit more comfortable with how to use this definition. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.